This is Bandic Atari 8-Bit Podcast. Kathleen O'Brien worked at Shepardson Microsystems, where she wrote the assembler editor cartridge and wrote the floating point routines for Atari Basic. Her husband, Paul Lofton, wrote the rest of Atari Basic. She, along with Bill Wilkinson and Paul Lofton, co-founded Optimized System Software, where she wrote much of the book, Atari Basic Sourcebook. I conducted this interview on February 20th, 2015. Tell me about the first time you saw an Atari computer. I really don't remember. Um, first, first thing that's really clear is when we started working on Atari Basic and the Atari uh, Assembler Editor, and then we were given Ataris then to do our testing. They gave you some 800s, I assume, to... Uh... 800, yes. And what, which was Basic first, the first thing they wanted you to do? Or a similar editor, or is it kind of a simultaneous thing? I don't remember. They were very close together. I, I worked yeah. primarily on the assembler editor and did part of the basic. And mm-hmm. so the basic may have been going on while I was doing the assembler editor, and I got that done, and then I picked up part of the basic. Okay. So as I understand it, you did the, the floating point routines in I basic. did. Uh-huh. Bill Wilkinson... Um, I didn't know how to do floating point, and Bill Wilkinson explained how to what was needed for floating point, and then I implemented it. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious how that because Paul Paul did most of the rest of basic, right? Yes. Yeah. So I'm just curious how that it's like a conversation happened. It's like, honey, will you do the floating point routines? <laughs> you know? uh, actually, it was the boss who said, Kathleen, why don't you do this? <laughs> Uh-huh. And I said, okay, I can do that. I mean, we were, this was at Shepardson Microsystems, and we were pretty much a team. So actually, yeah. you know, Paul and Bill Wilkinson and I all had a hand in it, yeah. in the basic. And a simpler editor, I pretty much did that myself. Can you tell me about that that process, or was it just... Uh, well, there? I had um, uh, a way to write... The code. Oh, actually, I this was key punch. <laughs> That's been so long ago. I uh, I wrote out what needed to be done. Uh, Mike Peters key punched it. We put it onto paper tape, and then from that we could make an EEPROM. And then we put the EEPROM in the cartridge, and we could test. Was it just a lot of iteration of that, or was it? Yes, of course. <laughs> any, any programming project, there's going to be a lot of iterations. And sure. the way that I like to program is do a little bit and see if that works and then do a little bit more. So the, it makes for lots of iterations. Sure. So, I mean, overall, the, the three of you working, I don't know. I, I mean, you guys have done other, pro- other projects before, but what, what was the situation? What did it feel like? Was it just like a, just another gig or was it like stressful or oh. on deadlines? Was it fun? No. It was fun. I mean, programming is almost always fun for me. So we would, uh, Bill just, Bill's part was really explaining how floating point was done. And then Paul and I did the coding. And we would work either there or at home uh, till two or three in the morning and bring our stuff in for Mike to work on. And we'd work a bunch of 12, 14 hour days. And then we'd take off a couple of days and go skiing. And it was it was a good process. Yeah. Shep was a good boss. We had a lot of fun. Good. We were in one big room. Before the before the days of everybody being in one room, we were in one room with a couple of other guys and so there was a there was interaction that way. Uh-huh. Where did you learn Computers. I mean, what college or you know, did she self-taught or? Yeah, mostly on the job. I had mm-hmm. worked at um, Control Data, a, something called Service Bureau, which had been part of IBM and then was given to Control Data as part of a antitrust settlement. 
And so we used all IBM equipment. And uh, that's where I learned assembler was my first language. So I was programming in assembler there. And then when I went to Shepherdson's, uh, the it was just a different different assembly language. Sure. Was it unusual at the time? Did you feel it was unusual for a woman to be in that field doing that sort of thing, or, or was it, or was it not unusual? Well, I think IBM was good about hiring women. I mean, was mm-hmm. I think they were open to that, and so there were a few other women when I was at Control Data, and I never felt that that was really an issue. I mean, I did a good job, and I and I was accepted as a programmer who did a good job, and this was mm-hmm. never an issue. And then at Shepherdson, I was the only woman, but there were only about at the height, there were probably only five of us, so it right. didn't. I don't know. It always felt more like we were all programmers than that we were men and women. Okay. Um, I think it wasn't an issue for me, so it wasn't an issue for them. Were there any memorable people that you worked with at Atari or that that you met over there? Um, Amy Chin at Atari. This was, I didn't have a lot of contact with Atari with the project. Um, they just sort of somebody somebody told Shep what to do and he told me what to do and I didn't interact with Atari but I had much more interaction when Paul went to work there and uh, he was working on the next generation of Atari computer one of the people there was Amy Chen and I she stands out in my mind and Lou Tarnay Lou Tarnay was the manager and Amy Chen was a programmer okay. Lou Tarnay was Paul's manager and Paul was Amy's manager. So after OSS was founded, um, you and Paul didn't really hang around too much. That didn't hang around long after it was founded. What was your capacity there for the time that you were there? Well, I had a baby, so I wasn't doing a whole lot at that point, except mm-hmm. that I wrote the Inside Atari DOS. No, uh-huh. Inside Atari Basic. The Inside Atari Basic and the that was a book that we thought might be successful. And so I actually used the Atari uh, to write that. And in one of my back bedrooms, I wrote whenever the baby was asleep. And my sister would come over and take the baby out, and I would do a little bit more. And that was what I remember about OSS. Huh. Writing while the baby said, I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> Said inside Atari Basic, you said you were you kind of implied it was not a success that book. Well, I don't know. I I yeah. I was only interested in writing it, <laughs> and so no. somebody else messed with whether or not anybody bought it. <laughs> not your problem. Not my right. problem. And that that was I'd done the fun part. Somebody else did the rest of it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right. Right. Well, do you have any? stories or, or, or memories that you'd like to share? Anything that pops to mind about that time? Well, when, uh, right after our baby was born, uh, they were having a potluck at Atari in Paul's department, or I guess probably Lou Tarnay's department. And Paul wanted me to come, and it didn't seem very appropriate for me to come. So he finally told me, well, they were planning a surprise shower. And I said, it was a surprise. How do you know? And he said, well, Amy's planning it, and Amy is very scrutable. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So they, they threw you a baby shower? Yes. That's adorable. Yes, nice. it was very nice. So baby and I went. Uh, she wasn't very old. A week or so, maybe. Mm-hmm. We went to the, I was reluctant to get out, but it was fun. They were, they were a bunch of good people. Um, all right. Any other stories or anything? I, uh, that's pretty much what I remember. I, like I said, I didn't have a whole lot of contact with Atari. It was mostly the people at OSS. Mm-hmm. Uh, not at OSS, but at, at Shepherdson's and then at OSS when when Bill worked with that. I, I do remember that one of the nice perks about working for Shepherdson was that he would take us to lunch pretty often <laughs> <laughs> in his Mercedes little sports car. Cool. Nice. 
Did, were, were you impressed with it with the Atari 800? I mean, did you think it was a decent machine compared to other equipment you would use? It was good. Um, yeah. The other machine that I compare it with was the Apple II, and and they were they were comparable. I used the Atari for the writing the book because they had a a little text editor that would do both upper and lower case, and that mm-hmm. time the Apple only had upper case. Right. So the, the Atari was a useful machine, and I enjoyed using it. All right. Well, I guess that's about all, all I have. That's about all I remember. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for getting out of your comfort zone and talking to me today. Appreciate it. All right. You're welcome. Have a great day. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed these interviews and would like to contribute something, I encourage you instead to donate to one of our favorite organizations, the Internet Archive, at archive.org. The Internet Archive is a nonprofit digital library with the stated mission of universal access to all knowledge. They've done incredible things to preserve computer history, including hosting thousands of programs in an in-browser Atari emulator, creating the Wayback Machine, and offering full-page scans of countless Atari computer books and magazines. Make your tax-deductible contribution at archive.org donate.